President Trump set to rally voters in Virginia on Friday and one of three key swing states the campaign is really focusing on. Actually, there are three that they're really focusing on. So let's break them all down for you. Trump and Biden are tied at 48 percent, as you can see, in Virginia. It last went red when George W. Bush won back in 2004. The Trump campaign is also expanding the grassroots efforts in Minnesota, where Biden leads Trump by four points in the latest polling. The last time this state went red was in 1990. 1972 with Richard Nixon. And then Trump rallied voters on Saturday, as you saw at that rally in points, and that is Biden's birthplace. Trump last one or a Republican last one in that state in 2016, and that was with Donald Trump. So what are Trump's strategies when we go into the CNN presidential debate and when we look at these battleground states? Republican National Committee co-chair Laura Trump joins us now to talk about this. Hey, Laura. Hey, Ainsley. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, when you look at some of these battleground states, what is the strategy? Well, listen, I think it's the strategy that Donald Trump is applying and has been applying across the country, which is we have to compare two presidents and their presidencies. And I think when Donald Trump is out there talking to supporters, and I think you will hear a lot of this on Thursday night, his job and our job from the RNC and the Trump campaign is to continue to the, remind the American people how much different their life was with Donald Trump in office, how much better their life was. They had more money in their pocket. We had a secure southern border. We had our standing on the world stage, Ainsley. Gas was $1.87 a gallon on average when Donald Trump was in the White House. And so you compare that to right now, and it's just about 180 degrees in the wrong direction where we are as a country. And I think when people are hurting out there, and they truly are in this country, it's a great opportunity for Donald Trump to come in, whether it's in Philadelphia, whether it's in Detroit, whether it will be in Virginia, and say, hey, remember when I was there? I know how to do it, and you know I know how to do it because I actually did it. That is the strategy. And he believes he should go to places where Republicans traditionally do not go. You're going to see Donald Trump in more of these very blue areas because he believes if you go ask for people's votes, they will vote for you. Now is a time we need to save this country. And it doesn't matter where you are in America. Your life has gotten worse, not better, under Joe Biden's regime as president of the United States. Now is the time Donald Trump thinks he can pick off some of these blue states. Yeah, and the polls are showing that Donald Trump does have the momentum. We're seeing the fundraising efforts. In May, he raised more than Joe Biden, and that was after the conviction. Joe Biden, of course, you saw the campaign ads on his side, using the conviction to go against him uh, in these campaign ads. How are you guys going to spend the money that Donald Trump has raised? Well, listen, I think we need to continue to counter that message. I think it's ridiculous, by the way, the fact that they think that that is going to be a problem. These convictions in uh, in New York, which everybody knows was a total sham trial. If you look at the money we raised, Ainsley, 30 percent of the money that came in in the 48 hours after Donald Trump's conviction, $70 million, 30 percent of that was from people who had never donated to Donald Trump before. Mm -hmm. So the idea that somehow that's going to hurt him, I think, is ridiculous. But look, we are playing things differently on the Republican side. We have an incredible election integrity program right now. Unlike anything I think we've ever seen in this country, we're going to use a lot of money to, to train all of our poll watchers, poll workers, our legal experts around the country, because we need to ensure election integrity. We want to do things like legal ballot harvesting in this country everywhere we possibly can. We need to swamp the vote and make it too big to rig. So we got to encourage people to get out and vote early. Go vote early and then take people with you from that moment all the way up to Election Day, we are going to apply all the money that we are receiving from uh, voters across this country who really want their country back to ensure a free, fair, and transparent election, to mobilize our ground troops all across this country and make sure that we all go to bed early on Election Night, Ainsley, because Donald Trump will be declared the 47th president very early, we believe. Okay. Uh, Laura, let's talk about uh, today. It's the anniversary when the Supreme Court made that historic decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. That was actually two Two years ago today. So this is a big issue for a lot of women around the country, abortion. Uh, how will he handle that uh, on Thursday? Well, look, uh, Donald Trump obviously nominated three Supreme Court justices to the bench who made the right decision and actually
actually sent Roe v. Wade out and said, listen, this is up to the states. It shouldn't be up to a small the most democratic thing now has happened. And I think that's what Donald Trump has continued to say. It goes back to the states. So every respective state gives we the people the opportunity to opine on such a major decision such as this. I think you're going to hear that from Donald Trump. It's what he has continued to say. And if we're being honest, this is just about the only thing the Democrats think they can run on this election cycle. Uh, I think Donald Trump will have a great response for it. And I, and I think that they're going to have to come up with better things to talk about like how they're going to make people's lives better in this country, which we know Donald Trump can do. Joe Biden has failed to do. He's taken things in the wrong direction. So they're, they're going to have to come up with a little more than that. Yeah, Joe Biden has hunkered down. They have totally different styles of prepping for this debate. Is he nervous? Uh, Joe Biden, I, I'm sure no, he's Trump, nervous. Donald Trump, does oh, he get no. nervous? No, listen, I think they, they have prepared Donald Trump, oddly, in, in such a strange way. From the moment he came down the escalator, Ainsley, in 2015 and announced he was running for president, there has been a target on Donald Trump's back. He's had constant incoming while he was president of the United States, especially now in the past year, that uh, plus that he's been running for president for a second term in office. I think they have prepared him for these moments where it'll be three on one. We know that, not just one on one versus Donald Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. He's got to go against, of course, Dana Bash and Jake Tapper as well. He is not nervous. He knows that whenever he talks about his vision for the future of America, it will resonate with the people of this country. He knows what he has to do. And listen, he doesn't need to hunker down anywhere. He was president for four years and a very successful one at that. He just has to talk about what he did and what he will go he's going to do when he's back in that White House. Okay, Laura, we can't wait for Thursday night. Thank you so much. Make sure thank you, you tune. Thank you. Make sure you tune in to Fox on Thursday. Thursday for Fox News Democracy 24 special coverage of the CNN presidential debate simulcast. Our coverage begins Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and Fox and Friends starts an hour earlier on Friday morning. So we'll be talking about uh, the debate if you missed it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.